how do you appeal to a completely new demographic? Part of the trick is not trying to be a bank. Do not try to do anything related to traditional banking. Because all that does is pollute their mind. Right? You want new users to have a brand new experience with Bitcoin that is unlike any banking they will ever see. You don't want it to look like a checking account. God forbid you use the word checking. Mm -hmm. Open any one of the exchanges right now. Circle, Coinbase, open them up. What is the name of your account on Coinbase? It is the checking account. And it has a balance. And it shows you a statement. Who the hell did they hire for this design? What does the word checking mean? It means an account on which you can write checks. Now, I know this is America, and we're 25 years behind on fintech. The rest of the world doesn't do checks, I can guarantee you. What is a check? A check is the device by which a grandma can make 20 people in line behind her at the supermarket simultaneously groan. <laughs> That's what a check is. <laughs> and I use it to pay my rent every month. I don't know why. <laughs> because I can't do it any other way. And it's insane. It's insane that I'm signing a piece of paper and sending it through the postal system in 2015, for God's sake, so that my landlord can then walk it to the bank and deposit it so that it might clear three to five business days later after they've charged him five dollars to own his own money. <laughs> we don't really need a hard sell to make Bitcoin win on the banks. All you need in order for Bitcoin to win against banks is for a person to use Bitcoin for a week, and then the bank will take care of the rest. <laughs> they'll freeze their account, they'll tell them they're closed, They'll hold it for three to five business days, and you just sold Bitcoin. Banks will sell it for you every single time. I was invited to do a talk at the Bundesbank. You heard of the Bundesbank, the German Federal Bank? They were paying me for this speaking engagement, but they don't know how to do Bitcoin, which is a real problem because I, I usually get paid in Bitcoin. So we agreed to do a wire transfer. It took 16 days. I sent them the details. Actually, no. First, they asked me for my account number. I gave them my account number. Then the next day, they came back and they said they need the SWIFT number. By that time, my bank was closed, so I couldn't get the SWIFT number. The next morning, I got the SWIFT number and I sent it to the Germans. But by that time, their bank was closed. The next morning, they used the SWIFT number and discovered it was the wrong SWIFT number. It was the SWIFT number for U.S. dollars not for foreign currency. So they sent me an email, but by that time my bank was closed. So the next day I got the other SWIFT number and I sent it to the Germans, but by that time their bank was closed. They sent me the wire. My bank took one look at this wire and said, Bundesbank, never heard of them. Sound dodgy. <laughs> Let's freeze this for 14 days, just in case they bounce. Like, this is the third largest central bank in the world. <laughs> this is the German Federal Bank. They do not bounce checks. <laughs> All right. So 14 days later, and this is the great part. They said, "Money held, money released." They released eighty dollars. <laughs> of the total amount, which was a four-figure amount. Eighty dollars. Why eighty? What the hell is that? What am I going to do with... I mean, just hold all of it. Are you teasing me? <laughs> this makes no sense. This is what we're addressing with Bitcoin. So if you're, if you're introducing a new product in this market and you're a designer, which parts of this design metaphor do you want to reuse in your product? According to the Bitcoin marketplace, all of them. So that you can persuade people that this is just like your bank. It doesn't have any of the good parts of a bank, like 
the ability to easily reverse transactions, to get a refund if you lose your private key. It doesn't have any of those. It also doesn't have any of the bad parts of banks, but we don't pay attention to that. And so we've created expectations that are entirely misleading. Bitcoin desperately needs design. Desperately, desperately needs design. It's been created by engineers, and it is absolutely inscrutable. But I have hope. I have hope because we've done this before. I got on the internet in 1989, and at the time it was illegal to use commercial activities on the internet. It was owned by the National Science Foundation, and it was only for academics or let's say 15-year-olds who happen to find the password to an academic system. <laughs> and at the time, DNS was still in its infancy. Most systems didn't really have DNS names assigned yet. It wasn't very well structured. So a lot of the most interesting things you could only find by IP address. So I walked around with a list of IP addresses in my wallet so that I had access to these things. And then in order to use it, it required Unix command line skills. Now, there is absolutely no way that was going to get used by my mom. No way. Absolutely no way. My mom called me and told me her stereo was broken. And I tried to figure out why, and she told me it's displaying an error message. It's blinking at me, zero colon, zero, zero. <laughs> It took me a few minutes to figure out she had pulled the plug and the clock had reset. And so the clock was waiting to be set again and was blinking zero colon zero zero. That's the person who I wanted to use the internet so we could talk, but that wasn't going to happen. It took almost exactly 20 years from the day I sent my first email to the day my mom sent her first email. And in order to do so, a lot of things had to happen. Most importantly, the iPad. Because she was able to do it with a swipe of a finger, and that's the only thing that made it possible. There was no way that internet could be used by mainstream. 